All right, AP Art History students, let's get to one of the most famous works of Neolithic art, and that is Stonehenge, located in Wiltshire, United Kingdom. That's England, and this is a perfect example of Neolithic European megalithic architecture. Megalithic. Got to remember that for your vocabulary note card set that you're creating. Now, this was done in a series of builds. So there's building phase A, B, and C. And so the construction phase of Stonehenge went from 2500 BCE to 600, 1600 CE. And this is made of sandstone. But before we get into Stonehenge and its content and its context, we'll talk about its form. We need to have a conversation about architecture. So for your notes, you need to start creating a section which we would call like the architectural elements. And one of the earliest methods of spanning a space and one of the simplest forms of construction is called post and lintel. It is the most basic of all the architectural styles. You have two upright posts, okay, that support a horizontal element, and that's known as the lintel. And there are countless variations. You can do this in a wood structure. You can do, do this in a dolmen. You can do it in underground burial chambers of prehistory. Uh, to the Egyptians in the Greek stone construction, to medieval timber frame buildings, and even to cast iron and steel construction. It does, however, have its limits. The limitation is the space spanner and the degree of tensile strength of the lentil material. And the farther you take those posts apart, the center of that lentil is going to get weaker and weaker into a point where it sags and breaks. But because we're discussing post and lintel is because it's critical to understanding of our stone hinge construction. So did you get that post and lintel construction? Very important when we're talking about stone hinge. So make sure you put that into your architectural elements, into a special section of your notes. Prehistoric people were known for building shelters, such as our example of Scarbray here in this image right here. And or creating semicircular huts. But some of the most famous structures were not for uh, living in, and but they were certainly for worshiping. And again, our early belief systems. And I wanna have this discussion about menhirs. And these are large individual stones that were erected in singularity or in long rows, stretching for great distances. And they are found in Europe and they are found in Spain and they're found obviously in England. Minher uh, cut, uh, cuts were erected again, and they were rectangular in shape and used in the construction of prehistoric complexes, and these were called megaliths. If you take megaliths and you put them into a circle and you place a lentil on top, this is called a hinge. Of all the megalithic monuments in Europe that has stirred the most imagination, it is Stonehenge. A hinge is a circle of stones or posts often surrounded by a ditch with the built up embankments and laying out such circles with accuracy would have posed no particular problem at this time. Architects would have relied on, on human compass. That is that you needed two people, you needed a cord or a, a, a knotted rope to give a desired radius, you put one person in the middle and then you had another person just walk in a circle with the, with the string, with the knotted rope at a taunt level. And then you would, you know, step off the circle's circumference. Now, Stonehenge is not the largest such circle from the Neolithic period, but it is one of the most complex. Stones were brought from great distances, utilizing human power, not as most people would think that aliens, gotta throw our aliens in there because, you know, it's, it's the great thing to talk about. So humans brought these and from a quarry to this current site. Now, they, the, the structure itself was built in four major building phases, and this happened between 2750 and 1500 BCE. And in the earliest stage, its builders dug deep 
circular, uh, circular ditch placing the excavated material, that is the, 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 the stone, on the inside rim to form an embankment more than six feet in depth. By 2100 BCE, Stonehenge would include all of its internal elements. Dominating the center was a horseshoe-shaped arrangement of five sandstone trilithons, or, or pairs of upright stones topped by lintels. The one at the middle stood considerably taller than the rest, rising to a height of about 24 feet, and its lintel was more than 15 feet long and three feet thick. Now, this group was surrounded by the so-called sarsen, that's S-A-R-S-E-N, circle, a ring, and this is a ring of sandstone upright, weighing up to about 26 tons each, averaging a height of about 13 feet 6 inches. Now, this circle, 106 feet in diameter, was capped by a continuous lintel, and the upright were tapered slightly towards the top, and the gently curved lintel sections were secured by a new architectural element, and that's known as mortise and tenon joints. That is, the joints were made by a conical projection at the top of each upright that fits like a peg into the hole in the lintel. Sun shines exactly in between a pair of stones during the summer solstice. Now, what is the context behind this? You know, there are so many theories uh, to try to explain Stonehenge. Again, aliens is one of those things. We can also go to the Middle Ages, where people thought that Merlin, the magician of King Arthur legend, had built Stonehenge. Uh, later, this site was uh, incorrectly associated with the rituals of the Celtic Druids. These are priests because of its orientation in relations to the movements of the sun. Some people believed it had some sort of observatory function. And the structure must have been an important site for major public ceremonies. And whatever the role may have been, Stonehenge continues to fascinate us. We can go on to Discovery Plus and we can watch, you know, documentaries about Stonehenge or we can go to Prime and watch something about Stonehenge. And Stonehenge, you know, kind of plays into our imagination of these structures. And we'll never, ever learn the true purpose of this megalith structure. All we can try to understand is, you know, how did it get constructed? How did they get the materials there? And we're also introduced to the earliest form of architectural building. Work number eight in the AP art history uh, categories here of the 250. And what do we know so far about this work? Absolutely nothing. I mean, other than, you know, what is its context and what is its content? But do we truly know why it was built? Absolutely not. Why? Because this is prehistory. There's no writing and this is just driving us insane. But it's making a lot of documentary films and their producers a lot of money. So I hope you enjoyed what you heard today. Maybe you got something out of it. If you do, hey, hit that subscribe button that's down there so we can just can keep this program going. Thanks for listening.